Without a doubt, Jerry Springer was easily one of the most recognizable names in all of talk TV. I mean, after all, how many other hosts can you recall having their name chanted on a regular basis for minutes on end by their studio audience? Jerry might not have bribed his audiences by showering them in gifts like free books and new cars, but that didn't stop his series from briefly beating out even the Oprah Winfrey show in the late 90s as TV's most popular daytime show. The Jerry Springer show started life as a political commentary program back in 1991, but it would soon shift its focus to tabloid news in the mid 90s to turn itself into a ratings juggernaut. Over the next 27 years, Jerry would become the king of shock TV. And when Whenever he needed to escape the madness of enraged ex-lovers, flying chairs, or other dangerous projectiles, Jerry made his way back home to his residence in Sarasota on Florida's Bird Key Island. For those who never heard of it before, Bird Key is a man-made island that was created back in the 1950s by founding father Arthur Vining Davis. Arthur was the CEO of Alcoa, the world's eighth largest producer of aluminum. Jerry's home on the island is located in the west, boasting a reported four bedrooms, five bathrooms, as well as just over 6,000 square feet of space. He purchased this very salmon colored home back in 1987 for just $375,000. And since then it's increased in value to an estimated worth of $4.6 million. Unfortunately, Jerry has maintained a wall of strict privacy when it comes to his home life and he's never shared any images of the inside. Instead, all we really know for sure are the amenities included around the property, like it's full dock with a private boat. Even with all that water surrounding Jerry's home, he maintained a large swimming pool in the premises that took up the majority of the backyard. Meanwhile, there's also a gigantic deck that provides ample space to spread out under the Florida sun or to enjoy those wonderful views of the water. And while we might not know all that much about Jerry's home here in Sarasota, we know quite a bit more about his love for the city. Jerry Springer decided to move his home base from Cincinnati, Ohio to Sarasota, Florida in 1997. Interestingly enough, Jerry almost didn't move to Sarasota at all. During a 2012 interview with The Observer, he revealed that Sarasota was actually his third choice of ideal living spots. But after determining that California would be too far of a commute and that South Carolina was simply too cold, Springer decided to set down roots in Florida. From that point on, he immediately fell in love with the state's sparkling shorelines. In fact, it was Jerry's ex-wife, Mickey Velton, that discovered Sarasota in the first place. At the time, he and Mickey had been looking to live on the water, so Mickey traveled to Florida and spent a day or two just driving around. When she arrived in Sarasota, she was captured by its beauty and picked out a series of 10 different houses. Shortly after, Jerry flew down to check them all out. The 10th and final house would turn out to be the one they both loved it so much, they decided it would become their primary residence. Soon after, the people of Sarasota began to take notice of their famous new neighbor. Always maintain Jerry's privacy with the necessary level of respect. Sometimes when he and Vicky were enjoying a meal at St. Armand Circle shopping district, there might be a tourist or two who wanted to take a picture. But for the most part, Jerry could be home in Sarasota and not have to worry about being bothered. Now you might be wondering, considering every episode of his series around this time was shot in the state of Connecticut, how did his home in Sarasota Sarasota become his primary address. Well, it definitely helps that Jerry owned his own private plane that he used each Sunday to commute to Connecticut. He then spent two days shooting an entire week's worth of episodes only to hop on his plane and fly back. For the rest of the week, Jerry would enjoy his time off by walking around Lido Beach while eating out at a ton of local restaurants, such as Cafe Amici or State Street. But as special as Jerry's relationship was with Sarasota, it wouldn't be where he spent his final few days on Earth. Those moments were reserved for Chicago, Illinois. During the second season of The Jerry Springer Show in 1992, the series moved from Cincinnati to Chicago. Jerry continued to live in Cincinnati, but would commute to Chicago daily to film the series. When the show first arrived in Chi-Town, it was still a political series conducting serious discussions with various panels, but that would soon change in a way that many citizens of Chicago didn't appreciate. Weighed down by low ratings, The Jerry Springer Show underwent 
underwent a metamorphosis during this period, turning the series into a never-ending parade of individuals who belonged to hate groups, had strange fetishes, were being cheated on by their partners, or were simply brawling uncontrollably with family members. It was more like theater than it was a talk show, and it was also wildly successful, featuring such weird episode titles like I'm Pregnant by a Transsexual, I Slept with Your Husband and Son, Livid Lesbians, and My Grandpa is a Pimp. But once this series has evolved into this new structure, mainstream Chicago figures became mortified that Springer was making a reputation for himself in their city. When Springer showed up on the cover of Rolling Stone, local reverend Michael Flager launched a protest against his show. Then in 1997, Channel 5 anchors Carol Marin and Ron Majors resigned over concerns about the direction of the news operation after Springer was hired to provide commentaries for the 10 p.m. time slots. Springer delivered two commentaries and then quit. Two years later, the Chicago City Council called Jerry for hearings to determine if his show could be required to get an entertainment license. Eventually, in 2009, the Jerry Springer Show deserted Chicago to film in Stamford, Connecticut. That's when Jerry began his decades-long commute from Florida to Connecticut each week. Somewhat surprisingly, Jerry announced his retirement from entertainment a few months ago in late 2022, stating at the time he wanted to try enjoying retirement while he was still healthy. He explained in a statement released to the media at the time, I'm 78 and have been in front of the camera now for 40 years, plus 10 years in politics. I'm winding down. In in particular, Jerry was looking forward to spending time with his 13-year-old grandson who lives in Chicago with Springer's daughter Katie and her husband Richard. With his daughter still living in Illinois, Jerry actually owned a home of his own in the state and while we know next to nothing about it, it would become the very spot where he spent his final few moments on this earth. Word came down on Thursday, April 27th that Jerry had passed away in the comfort of his Chicago home. Family spokesperson Jean Galvin would release a statement after his death, reading in parts. Jerry's ability to connect with people was at the heart of his success in everything he tried. Whether that was politics, broadcasting, or just joking with people on the street who wanted a photo or a word. He's irreplaceable and his loss hurts immensely, but memories of his intellect, heart, and humor will live on. So while Sarasota might have been where Jerry's heart was, Chicago will be where his body remains at least for the time being. It's unclear where he'll be buried, but it will no doubt be somewhere that came to mean a lot to him over the course of his life. For now, that'll bring this latest house tour to a close. Thanks so much for watching, and before you leave, consider answering the following question. Would you be willing to commute by flying to a different state each week for work? Let me know if you would have kept that up for decades like Jerry did in the comments below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss an episode. My name's Kara, thanks again for watching, and and I'd like to send my best wishes out to Jerry's family. We're all thinking about you right now. If you'd like to keep watching, then don't go anywhere because coming up is a look into another TV show personality you might know, Judge Judy. Bye. Judy Justice debuts today, and you will notice some significant changes. Well, she remains as sharp and witty as ever. Are you prepared to enter the real estate holdings of Judge Judy Sheedlin? Well, ready or not, that's exactly what's about to happen. Judge Judy is famous for her willingness to come down hard on nearly anyone, and she's been gracing our TV screens for well over two decades, winning the heart of many. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you wanna see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. In fact, after a total of 25 seasons, her legendary series brought in an average of around 10 million viewers a day, making her a major Hollywood success story to the tune of a $440 million net worth. If I knew a judge could make that kind of money, I would have paid a lot closer attention during my high school civics course, I can tell you that. Of course, Judy knows exactly how to invest that money as well. Take for instance, her recent decision to scoop up this beautiful Newport, Rhode Island home. And Judy bought the place in July of 2018. And according to a press release from the Newport Daily News, her brand new estate that overlooks the ocean side is one of the highest priced property sales in Rhode Island, coming in at $9 million. 
The original owner of the estate, Campbell Soup heiress, Dorans Hill Hamilton, originally listed the property for $12.5 million. But following her death in 2013, the price of the property would reduce significantly over the years. Eventually, Judy swept in to buy the nearly 15,000 square foot home, making it hers permanently. The six bedroom, eight bathroom residence boasts a number of highlights that include a two story entrance hall, as well as a living room with a floor to ceiling stone fireplace that needs to be seen to be believed and is finished off with some classy wood paneled walls. Her kitchen has been crafted with custom made cabinets and a kitchen island that offers both a marble countertop as well as a butcher block section. There's even a raised area for breakfast bar seating and only a few feet away from there is a charming breakfast nook surrounded by wraparound windows. Whenever Judy's looking to relax and unwind after a long day of work, she has her fair share of options to choose from. Either her gorgeous wood paneled study with a cozy looking fireplace or in her uniquely decorated emerald green dining room. And when it comes to her new bedrooms, the most fascinating thing about them is definitely their use of wallpaper. The master suite has been done up in all yellow everything, while guests can take their pick from a pair of rooms that channel the greenery of the property's surrounding forest. Installed elsewhere is state-of-the-art technology, including geothermal heating and cooling in the floors, as well as an elevator. And over in her gorgeous backyard, you'll discover not only an outdoor kitchen, but a sheltered sitting area and a small-sized pool set directly into the deck. Basically, what I'm trying to say is no expense was spared in the creation of this beautiful sanctuary. Then again, the same could easily be said for all of Judy's numerous homes. And if her honor ever feels like decamping somewhere else, well, it's not like she doesn't have choices, some of which reside down south in Naples, Florida. Back in 2005, Judge Judy and her hubby Judge Jerry bought themselves a golf front penthouse pad in Naples, Florida for a grand total of $6.9 million. This 8,550 square foot unit is a 16th floor penthouse suite that offers four bedrooms, six baths, two private elevators, a gorgeous wraparound sitting area, and its very own sauna. In other words, despite technically being an apartment, this home boasts plenty of space and the type of accommodations you're most likely to find in a resort. This includes a spacious gourmet kitchen with marble countertops and a large gas range stovetop. There's also a living room with enough space to fit an entire dining room table off to the one side. Oh, and did I mention the separate areas for a library and home office? According to property listings, Judy's primary suite features dual his and hers bathrooms, a walk-in wardrobe, and not far from there is a nanny suite that comes complete with its own kitchenette. If you're worried that Judy wouldn't be seeing much of that Florida sun while living in an apartment, don't fret too much because her unit also comes with access to a pool deck cabana. After owning this property for close to eight years, Judy and her husband would decide to move on and pick themselves up a 10,000 square foot mansion just down the street for a reported $8.9 million after listing their previous penthouse for a bit more than that, 11 million to be exact. Now there's less known about this new property than her penthouse, but report suggest the home boasts six bedrooms and 11 baths with a comfortable and cozy living room that includes a wet bar in the back. Other unique highlights are said to include a black marble floor foyer with a gigantic central staircase, as well as a professional grade kitchen with a breakfast bar and massive island. Then there's the exterior, which features a lush landscaped backyard with not one, not two, but three waterfalls, a spa, and an elegant gazebo located next to a lagoon style pool. Pretty nice, right? And yet neither of these Florida properties or her new home in Rhode Island are Judy's main residence. For that, we have to travel to Greenwich, Connecticut. For the past decade and a half, Judge Judy's home base has been her gorgeous stone mansion, situated on 12.5 acres in the extremely affluent Greenwich, Connecticut. Property records suggest that Judy bought the estate back in September of 2007 for $13.2 million. And various online reports state that she had the original structure on the premises demolished to make way for her brand new 20,000 square foot home. With this being her main home for so long, details on the interior have been kept to a bare minimum. But aerial photos suggest that the estate has a large gatehouse, likely for security, as well as a carriage house, a massive motor court, stretches of green lawns, formal gardens, a swimming pool, and a cabana with a deep shaded patio. One other detail we know about this place is that Variety once reported the taxes on the property skyrocketed after Judy was done with her renovations. I'm talking to around 230. 
thousand dollars a year. Speaking of how Judge Judy earns her dough, did you know that she only generally works about 52 days a year? It's true. She manages to film all of her episodes for each season in that relatively a short amount of time. And yet she does so while living in another residence, this one located near where she films in Los Angeles, California. In 2013, Judge Judy reportedly paid $10.7 million for a 4,680 square foot apartment in Beverly Hills. Boasting five bedrooms as well as three and a half bathrooms, this unit is located inside the swanky building once known as Montage Beverly Beverly Hills. Judy's home away from home is said to feature top of the line amenities, not the least of which are the seven balconies scattered about the property and four underground parking spaces. The floor plan included with online marketing materials for the small number of apartments here suggests that Judy's new upper floor unit is entered through a long L-shaped foyer. Not far from there is a coat closet, a powder room, a petite library, as well as a much larger temperature controlled walk-in wine cellar. There's also a 42 foot long living room with a fireplace that leads out to a narrow balcony with low rise panoramic views of the city, mountains and sky. The formal dining room also opens up to a balcony which connects through a kitchen that comes well equipped with a center work island and walk-in pantry. Back in the living room, a set of double doors open to a bedroom slash den, while a second set of double doors leads to the bedroom wing, where two bedrooms share a sizable bathroom. The master suite occupies a prime position at the tail end of the hall and boasts a pair of roomy walk-in closets and a spacious bedroom with direct access to another balcony. Meanwhile, the attached bathroom is a couple of sinks with a makeup vanity, a separate for a tub and stall shower, as well as his and hers toilet cubicles. Last but not least, there's a guest suite that provides visitors with a mini balcony of their own, as well as a walk-in closet and a private bath. In case you're wondering, Montage Beverly Hills is now referred to as the Mayborn Beverly Hills, and it offers residents an army of discreet staff to cater to their every need, including well-connected concierge and super deluxe amenities, such as a spa and fitness facility, even a rooftop swimming pool. There are also five-star hotel services like room service and housekeeping. As an added bonus, security is said to be extremely tight. So there you have it, the many properties of Judge Judy. As we wrap up our tour for the day, do me a favor and ask yourselves this one question. If you needed to live in LA for two months out of every year, would you spend $10 million on a home to live nearby or just stay in a hotel? Let me know your answers in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss a tour. My name is Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat more and I will see you all in another video. Bye!